So my part of this presentation is more focused indeed on a, a, a practical case of how I move forward in some real life example. Um, to start with, just a, rem a reminder, because I'm not sure about, you know, in the audience who has full knowledge of that, but those who are familiar with the patent world know already about this, about the amount of data that we have in patents that are available, that are visible for all third party to search and, and dig through it. And it's quite, it's, it's really fantastic, the amount of data that we have there. It's, you know, everything from the countries, from the dates, the timeline, the keyword search, the inventors, all this information we can track in so many, many different ways. And it's really at the heart of big data, what we would call big data, but with the advantage of this going back more than 40 years, being available in multiple languages, being so structured that it's a great, great environment for automated translation, which allows us to work in many different languages. So what is, why do I speak about that? Why do I put this in there? And how does that connect with everything else? Well, you know, to start with, and, and what we just were discussing, we certainly shouldn't be waiting to define a strategy and a strategy shouldn't be just like, you know, going along and patenting things as they come. And in today's, you know, case study, we're gonna talk about real situation of merger and acquisition. And of course, in a merger and acquisition, when we look at a company as a potential um, acquisition target, we of course do a very extensive due diligence and in all the form of IP that we were discussing, the human side, the customer base, the contract are often what really drives the needle in terms of price point, at least from the point of view of an operating company, which is where I sit today. We're not looking at, you know, seeding uh, ventures. We're not a venture capital when we want to acquire companies because we see an opportunity in a business, but from an established business. And that's what we're trying to acquire. So we look at customer base, we look at contracts, we look at all of those aspects. But if we're looking at a company with a big or strong technology component, the fact that IP and patents are the only registered data that is available and with all this information that is listed on the screen right now that is searchable and then be organized, it gives us that insight, that knowledge to enter the field, to enter, to, to sort and organize our search because we are limited in resources. We cannot do the extensive due diligence on every company that we cross paths with. So while the rest of the IP in the case of acquiring an established business is maybe even more important than the patent, the fact that we have all this information structured and available in the patent area give us an entry point and give us a search and structured approach. Otherwise, there's just too much of it. There's just like, you know, so many of those companies out there, where do you start? So that's the, what we've used, um, what I've used patent site for in the last um, few years, months, um, focusing on identifying company. So the next few slides are really, uh, I, it's, a, it's a real case. And of an example of, so of course we had to, you know, edit and, and remove all the information that uh, could have allowed uh, you to identify which kind of technology or company we're talking about. But the process is what I want to discuss here. So with, like with any kind of analytics, the analysis that you're gonna get is only as good as the data set that you're reviewing. So the key aspect to start with is identifying a good data set. The way I've done that is I start with a known target, something that I know we are interested in, some company that we already talked with, 
because their technology fits the bill, fills the gap that we're trying to fill. So I start with that. I look at their recent year portfolio. I look at it in a, in a more, you know, um, engineering point of view, removing certain keywords because maybe they have two businesses or maybe their business has evolved over time and I need to do a bit of, uh, you know, cleaning around there. So I may remove certain keywords. Um, you know, patent side has those very uh, uh, useful Boolean function and not and not. And so you remove, you, you carve out, you clean out and you get the relevant portfolio of that company, which is what we do in the due diligence process anyway. Once I'm there, I try to kind of define the cluster in a bit broader sense. So one of the thing is I'm going to extract uh, keywords because of course I have my engineering team and I talk with them, but the point is we're trying to acquire a company to fill a technological gap, which means I have nobody in my team to give me the exact knowledge about that technology because otherwise I would need it to acquire. So I look at their portfolio and I shake it and I try to get some relevant keywords, okay? And all of that together with IPC classes, with the keywords of the portfolio analysis from that target gives me a definition of my technological or my technology cluster. So from that specific target, I then expand or I, I then dig into that specific target until I can define the technology that I'm looking for in patent keywords. And I do that already, you know, in the, in the we're here talking about patent site, I do that already in patent site. The next step is to validate, okay? So I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, I want to make sure I'm not completely out in the bush here. So I need to validate my cluster. So I look at it and say, okay, let's put that back in and let's put the companies that I know are operating in this space, does it match, okay? And here on the right side, you have the two indicators that I use the most often. On the top one is the portfolio size. While, you know, there is a lot of things to say about using not only the portfolio size, the portfolio size does, give an indication of how much money they invested behind that. I know from where I sit, we trim and review our portfolio every week or every month, and we only keep paying or we keep alive the things, the technology that we believe in. So I look at the portfolio size because it does tell me something about their, their investment strategy inside the company. And I also look at the technology relevance. So if you're not familiar with the patent set, different indicators, portfolio size, I think everybody uh, can understand it's the number of inventions, but the technology relevance is a normalized indicator around the citation, how much a, a, a patent document has of an influence in the future of the, the technology. And that already, you know, looking at this from those both angles already give us something so first, it allows me to, to validate my technical, technical cluster, but also sometimes it will give me a bit of a changing of the priorities. Uh, why is this moving around? All right. So if you see in that example, some companies that had a big quantity actually didn't have a lot of relevance. And then you have one company here that has a lot of relevance, but had a very little and very recent portfolio. Now, none of that is a final answer. But what this is useful for is to change the priority in which we're going to allocate our resource for the due diligence because those resources are limited. But in that case, maybe that company is going to get a second seat compared to that company, which wasn't initially being reviewed. But now we see that their technology is, you know, the talk of the, the talk of the moment. So we define the cluster starting from a sample and digging into that. We validate that cluster and in the process, we already shuffle a little bit the deck versus what we know. And the la next step is to really enlarge the cluster. So once I validated my cluster, I remove the known company and I just throw this and say, who is out there? Who is operating in that space? Now, in our case, as I said, we're not a venture company, so we don't want to acquire a, a 
a startup. I mean, if anybody is familiar with how a 100,000 people company operates, integration of a startup is bound to lead to a bit of cultural clash, okay? So we, we would probably, you know, swallow them and spit them out because it wouldn't work. So we need a company that is already familiar with bidding. We need a company that is already familiar with a certain uh, operating system, with a certain reporting, with a certain financial. So to do that, I have to, for example, remove the single inventors. I have to also add a portfolio size because a startup that will have two patents is great, but that's not what I'm looking for here. Another factor, which is very critical when we're talking of this, this is a tool to support the strategy on the merger and acquisition. Now you have to understand and you have to analyze your own strategy. In that case, we were looking at an acquisition in a specific region because budget, because the money was available, not worldwide, but for that region. So we looked at a certain geography, we looked at a certain size of portfolio and a certain type of company. And all of these are filters that you can put in patent sites and you shake it and you get some results out of that, okay? So, and that's again, um, um, practical example. So some of the companies here we had from the known companies, but you see here two companies that emerged and had patents that were increasing in, in, in relevance. And those are targets we didn't know about, companies that we had not heard about before. And in particular, one of them, because the way in that specific example I structured the query is that I was looking for not a company based in that region, but for inventors based in that region. And the difference is that it allowed me to identify that a company, a fairly large company that we already know, I was able to identify that they all of a sudden appeared on the map in that region. So they have a lab that we didn't know about before that was working in that area that is of interest to us in that region. And this search allowed me to identify that because one of these you know, curve going up is actually a large company, but because I've restricted saying, I want only the inventors from that region, I was able to see that emergence. And then this basically allowed us to, you know, among the, the known players and the new players based on the technology relevance, we identify and shuffle the targets. So we, identify new targets, we shuffle the, the priorities for existing targets, and we identified new players as well as what I call sub-entities within large player, which is that example of a lab um, within the, a large company, because you have those massive companies that operate in silos and it's very hard to find a full view. But actually with that, we were able to approach them. And even the people in the other regions, when we approached them, they didn't know that they had this R&D project going on in the region we were interested uh, for an acquisition, for an acquisition. So this is a real life example where we start with, as, as we were discussing earlier, the IP is a lot broader than just the patent. And if you limit your view to just the patent, it's, it's too restrictive. You have to make it bigger than that because in real life, it is bigger than that. But the patents with the amount of structured public data gives us an entry point. Mm. And in that specific example, using a tool like Patent Site, where we can switch based on technology relevance, based on size, use all those kinds of criteria, we can tailor that to match a search, which of course you have to have an understanding of your own search. You have to know what you're looking for because otherwise you're walking around in the dark room. So you have to have a good understanding of what you're looking for. And mixing all of that, we were able to use patent to save resources by not spending time on companies that we didn't want to, didn't fit the bill, identify companies that we had never thought of and review them and approach them. 
and identify a partner. In that case, it wasn't an acquisition at the end of the project. It was a partnership because we ended up partnering with that other company with their lab and kind of creating a joint development project with them around to fill that technological gap that we have. And that's like a practical example of how we've used IP intelligence to discuss with the board each of those steps. And of course, it's always you know, nice to have those charts and bring those to the board, but it's more important to understand what they mean and to be able to sit with the board members and translate what they want, whether it's the geography, the project, the technical gap, into criteria for searching the patents and then feeding back companies, adding value by saying, there is those companies we haven't identified before, or that company that everybody sounds very excited about because they have a great sales pitch. Guess what? They don't own any technology. So what are we talking about here? Because maybe something here is a bit, uh, you know, we, we're saying stars and, and glitter, but there is no substance behind or they've been hiding it. But in any case, it's a question that we need to ask. So all of those are tools to raise and address the questions that we would have in the board when looking at an acquisition. And with that, that's pretty much, I think, my next slide. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I went a little bit faster than expected, but maybe that will leave us more time for questions. That's always the, uh, the best bit. Thank you ever, ever so much, Robin. Uh, that was extremely insightful. And it's so great to hear a, a practical application where it's had really significant um, uh, cost benefits and um, uh, you know, saving effort, time and effort. So uh, marvelous. What, what, out, of, out of the entire exercise, what would you say was the most challenging aspect? The most challenging aspect was getting in the boardroom. And it still is a challenge, not to say it's solved. Um, IP is often seen as an expert business that kind of lives on its own, um, almost separate from the rest of the company. And very often, because we are experts in the field, we are not so good at communicating with people in other fields. And so, so many times I've seen presentation about IP starting by trying to educate the board about what is a fighting date. I mean, if they were interested, they will be patent attorneys by now. So <laughs> it's, not their, it's not their focus. And you have to really try to adjust and be on point and not try to educate it because we have an expert knowledge that we have a mission to educate the world about patents. Um, they, they've been working, you know, many, many boards have been working with looking at the patents from a chart at the end of the year where they say, oh, we have that many files, we have that much spent, everybody claps and we move on. So if patent was critical for their survival, they would have looked into it by now. 